you. Thank you for getting into the spirit of it. Now, this week, uh, we've been talking about it on the programme this week, and in fact, this weekend is going to be the last chance for people to have their say uh, about the future of these uh, prehistoric skeleton, a prehistoric child skeleton unearthed at Avebury in the 1920s. Now, the Druids are among those who think that it should be returned and reburied. They claim that it is a moral issue, but the British humanists have now weighed in to the row over what should be done uh, with the remains. Uh, Naomi Phillips is the British Humanist Association's uh, public affairs officer. She joins me on the line now. Afternoon, Naomi. Hi. What, the, um, what, what is the humanist point of view, or at least the, the BHA's point of view? Our point of view uh, as an organisation is that, uh, that these remains are of great uh, scientific and educational uh, and historical and archaeological value. Uh, and the benefits of having uh, these historic, uh, prehistoric remains on display in the museum far outweighs uh, a sort of uh, uh, the claims by, by this group of Druids um, that, the, that they should be reburied. The, the claims by the Druids um, are, are, are complex. They say they, say that, uh, they talk of this, this phrase, re-empowerment. I think uh, Terry Dobney, the keeper at the Stones at the uh, Avebury, mentioned on this programme last uh, earlier this week that, that this is, after all, a, a body of a child. This is, after all, a, a set of human remains. And we, as a society, have a certain dignified way of disposing of remains. Of course, and you know, we we as an organisation provide uh, lots of sort of services for bereaved people, and we hold sort of funeral stuff. We know very well the need to treat uh, the dead with respect. Um, but certainly, that there is nothing. Uh, it seems to us that these remains are being treated with the utmost respect. Um, and actually, uh, from, from the from this point of view of this um, sort of uh, group of druids, uh, uh, they, they say that their beliefs are that the reburial would be the best way to respect them. And actually. Uh, we, we think that the most important thing for these remains is they are. it is much more in the public interest for them to be uh, on, on display. Yeah, and the, the, it's an interesting, it's, 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 a, it's a complicated argument, obviously, it's an interesting one as well, but in what, the, 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 if I, you know, if you leave your body to medical science, for example, mm. uh, then, you know, your body is, is worth a great deal, as you say, as these remains are in scientific research and so forth. Mm. Once that research is done, of course, being stuffed and mounted is quite a different idea. Mm. Is it? I mean, there is a certain indignity in the idea of people going around and gawping at your body through a glass case. Well, I don't think so. And, um, you know, we have to sort of bear in mind what we're actually talking about is um, a sort of prehistoric um, sort of parts of uh, 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 skeletons and so on. Um, and, you know, importantly, I mean, the government's own guidance says that, says that the, the, the people with a strong genetic claim uh, uh, to, to sort of uh, uh, remains um, should have sort of, uh, should be taken into account, should have some sort of more say over them. But we mustn't forget that the that these particular remains um, have, uh, that every, pretty much everybody in Western Europe shares the same genetic claim to them. So this particular group of people are expressing their views and I have no doubt they're very strongly held. Um, however, uh, they do not, they are unshared views, I believe, um, um, and uh, it mustn't trump these sort of enormous and real proven benefits that these remains provide, and not just nationally but internationally. Is, is the age is, is the age absolutely key here? I mean, we're talking four thousand years. We're talking about um, a, a, a society, a civilization which we, we can't pretend to even understand the, the, the purpose or the meaning of. Although there are many interpretations of Avebury and mm. Stonehenge and Druidism and so forth, but in, in fact, it, it's, it, it was never written down. It's a manuscript that we can't read. We don't actually know. The best we've got is guesswork about what happened but the, the, there is a sort of a cut-off point if you like that it, we are sufficiently distant from it if the remains were say 50 years old mm -hmm. It would be different. Mm. Well, I think, you know, I mean, it, I think the age does matter uh, to an extent. But the age also matters. Uh, the, the age of these uh, of these remains actually is, is a very good reason for uh, retaining them in the museum because uh, we are constantly finding more and more out about our past and our natural history, uh, uh, not just for those of Navery, but for the whole sort of UK and wider, in, as I mentioned, sort of Western Europe. These remains are really key uh, in sort of un, un sort of uh, un. un delving into sort of the past and finding out uh, very much about how they lived and so on. And one of the really key uh, reports that was provided along with the consultation from English Heritage um, was that scientific methods of sort of testing, uh, testing sort of parts of these remains um, are still advancing. So we don't even know now how much they still have to offer in terms of uncovering um, exactly as you say, sort of like what life was like, or, you know, all that time ago. So it's really key 
tea that, in fact, they aren't reburied, but that, they, that we still have them preserved in what most consider a very respectful way um, and treated uh, um, sort of very well, uh, so that they are here for in the future when we have even more advanced methods in order to be able to sort of use them to uncover our past. Because you bear in mind, if we do demystify the whole thing and get to understanding, uh, get to understand exactly what happened, about from my uh, understanding of, uh, of living and working uh, around here, about sixty percent of the industry associated with it will be exposed as being a bit of mumbo jumbo. Well, I think that's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be realistic about it. There are people who have a vested interest in keeping these things mysterious, and I'm not suggesting that about the Druids or Terry, who I know mm. and stuff, because they are absolutely uh, sincere yes, uh, people sure. in their beliefs. But there is a, there is an adjunct, if you like, of people who, um, you know, don't mind banging out the old uh, bit of nonsense. Well, I think, yeah, the, uh, I think the sort of quest for truth uh, is always very important, and you know, we need to use sort of scientific and, uh, and other methods that we know uh, uh, to sort of all, always try and seek, uh, seek, seek what is true uh, and. And is accurate. So. The enlightened pursuit of intellect. I tell you, our weatherman Richard Angry would love you, Naomi. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Naomi Phillips uh, from the British Humanist Association. They say, well, the remains are more useful to us and more significant where they are. BBC Radio Wiltshire.